Good evening and welcome to QTV. I'm Michael James. I'm Sharon Mulheron. And I'm Matthew Bowe. QTV is Queensland's only GLBTIQ television show and we are very excited to be bringing it to you. Now, joining us on the couch tonight, we'll have Ruth and Davina who will tell us all about their radio show, Dykes on Mics. We'll also be talking about many new exciting local events. But first, the news. Earlier this week, New South Wales Legislative Assembly unanimously passed a motion introduced by Sydney MP Alex Greenwich to welcome Jean Robinson, an American openly gay bishop to the Australian state. Greenwich, who is openly gay and married to his boyfriend in Argentina last year, commented, I was encouraged by the number of speakers in support of equality for same-sex couples and the voices speaking in support of tolerance and acceptance. I'm proud that the New South Wales Parliament was able to put politics aside and at the end of a robust debate to welcome such a prominent and influential individual. Robinson is first openly gay same-sex marriage bishop in the Anglican Communion of the United States. That's fantastic. I'm very excited to see a religious figure that uh, is, is openly gay. There's just more and more stepping out there in the public eye. It's great to see. Um, now. In more gay news, uh, Australia's youngest parliamentarian, Wyatt Roy, announced his support for marriage equality this week. Now he told the media, I support the right of same-sex couples to have their loving and committed relationships recognised in state-sanctioned marriage. This announcement quickly followed Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey's announcement to vote against marriage equality if the coalition granted its members a free vote on the issue. It's really sad. We've got one thing that's absolutely fantastic, Wyatt Roy supporting us, and then we have Joe Hockey, the old guard, I guess, fighting against us. So it's, um, I hope everybody's writing in to Wyatt Roy to say thank you and thank you for your support, and we will support you because it's a brave move. That's a good point, Matt. And also thanking Kevin Rudd and continuing to ignore everything that Joe Hockey says. Now, here's a bit of news from the United States. Last Sunday, uh, Portland football fans stated an anti-homophobia demonstration at a match against California's Cheevers. The spectators held up fabric squares to form a rainbow flag across the stadium. Fans also held up large banners reading Pride Against Prejudice and Football Fans Against Homophobia. Last month, Timbers player Will Johnson was called a homophobic slur by Alan Gordon of San Jose Earthquakes, to which Johnson responded by scoring the game-winning goal. He remained relatively silent on the issue, stating, It's a very sensitive matter. I'd prefer the league to go through with their protocol. More sporting stars. Mm. They even had the, uh, the soccer player from England uh, who came out, Robbie Rogers, I think it was. Mm. He's actually now actively playing as well. Mm. So more and more coming out in sport. And it's classy, I mean, isn't it? Not to lash out back or to complain or to make a big deal about it. He's just letting whatever the, you know happens, happens. And hopefully people will stand up and support that. But that image of the rainbow going right across the um, whole stadium, it mm. just looks fantastic. Yeah. I love it. Now, uh, speaking of happy rainbows, uh, Boy Scouts of America have decided to overturn a ban to allow gay youth members to join their programs. After the announcement, the BSA Chief Executive Wayne Brock said that this has been a challenging chapter in our history. While people have differing opinions on this policy, kids are better off when they're in scouting. Now, some seem to disagree. Texas Governor Rick Perry was unhappy about the change, commenting, while I always cherish my time as a scout and the life lessons I learned, I am greatly disappointed with this decision. However, for Boy Scouts like Pascal Tesla, an openly gay 16-year-old from Maryland, they were elated by the outcome. Tesla was worried about that if the proposed change had been rejected, his dream to earn his Eagle Scout award would be ruined, saying, I was thinking that today could be my last day as a Boy Scout. Obviously, for gay Scouts like me, this vote is life-changing. 
But what I want to know is what happens later on. So when mm. they want to get into the hierarchy, because this is just a change for the youth. Mm. So it's something everybody should look into and mm. put their two bits in about. Well, I think the movement starts now and it can only get better from there. Uh, Canadian Blood Services has announced new guidelines and men who have not had sex with other men within the last five years will now be allowed to donate blood. Now, although the blood is tested for diseases, the one-year deferral period helps infections like hepatitis B, which disproportionately affect gay and bisexual men to be properly de detected. The Vice President, Dana Devine, commented, We recognise that many people will feel that this change does not go far enough, but given the history of the blood system in Canada, we see this as a first and prudent step forward on this policy. It's the right thing to do, and we are committed to regular reviewing this policy as additional data emerge and new technologies are implemented. Hopefully we can see that evolve a little bit more there. Uh, now our last story for the week. Uh, last week the world was devastated to hear, and I personally was as well, uh, that the Rocky Horror Picture Show's Tim Curry had recently suffered a major stroke. His publicist, Marsha Howitz, was now has now clarified that his health struggle is somewhat dated. The 67-year-old experienced a stroke last July and he has been going to physical therapy ever since. Hurwitz reassured his fans, saying he's doing very well and in great humour. He thanks everyone for sending him good wishes. I hope he gets better soon. I've, Tim Curry, Rocky Horror, the, my life. So. <laughs> <laughs> Now, um, that's the news for this week. Uh, if you have any stories or issues that you would like to see covered, leave a message on our Facebook page or tweet it to us. Or you can send an email to our producer, steve.whiteley at 31.com.au. Now, we'll be back after this short break with more QTV. Welcome back to QTV. Now we're joined tonight on the couch by Ruth and Davina from Dykes on Mics. Mm. Now Dykes on Mics is part of one of the longest running queer radio programs in the country and quite possibly the world, if we can have that confirmed. Now uh, the girls are here tonight to tell us all about their radio program and uh, what they do. So thank you very much for joining us, Ruth. Thank you. And Davina. Thanks for having us. So uh, Sharon and Matt, you guys are going to kick us off with the first round of questions for the evening. Well, let's start with the first thing. It's 102.1. 102.1, 4 triple Z. And that's on what night? Tell us the night, tell uh, us the time. Wednesday, 7 till 9pm. Uh, and we also uh, broadcast uh, through the web. We stream Excellent. through the website at 4zzfm.org.au. So people can listen to you anywhere in the world? Yeah. Very mm. nice. So how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been with the show uh, for 10 years now. Actually, next month will be my 10 year anniversary. So it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ruth, how long have you been with us? Uh, five years, actually. That's where Davina and I first met was on the radio. Mm -hmm. oh. I was subject to the Dykes on Mike's casting couch and apparently <laughs> I passed with flying colours. That's very yes. exciting. Love born on the airways. It was, it was. <laughs> cool. Yes. Now, what is the show all about? What, uh, what was your, I suppose, your, your intention and your drive and your goal for the program? Um, I'd listened to it, I guess, growing up uh, and, you know, coming out as a lesbian. And, and Triple Z's always been an extremely left-leaning alternative station um, and arguably a necessity amongst a lot of the media in Australia. So, it, to me, it had always been really radical and really... Um, very feminist driven and very political and I am um, do some entertainment work so my goal was to bring an element of comedy and entertainment to the show and hopefully broaden its accessibility to make it more uh, listenable for people outside of the lesbian community. Well, it's certainly very entertaining. I listened to it on the way home on Wednesday nights and I cracked myself up. <laughs> what about for you Davina? What does it, what does it mean to you? Um, the show means a lot. Um, I think, I mean, I didn't go in with any kind of idea about what I wanted to achieve with the show. It really was, um, I love doing radio and I really love the people that, that I did it with when I first, you know, went in there. 
But I think over the years I've really seen that this show isn't just about, um, or what it is about entertainment and having fun. For some people, the show's actually been a lifeline. It's the kind mm. of thing that people can listen to with headphones on uh, and no one else realising what they're doing. We've got, you know, we've received a number of letters over the years from young people and from people who are on, in retirement age who either haven't come out or are just coming out now and have really sort of taken our program as um, a place where they can be themselves in, uh, when they can't in the rest of their lives. Mm. It's so. great that, that stations like 4 Z and shows like you are really helping to provide a, a human dimension to, um, to, to the life of lesbians and gays and bisexual transgender people. I wanted to ask, how do you feel about the way that, that, that lesbians are portrayed in the media? Do, do you feel it's accurate or what would you like to change? Um, <laughs> is it accurate? I'd say no, um, but you know I think that it's you're seeing more and more lesbians in the media, like mm. and in in characters in mainstream programming. But I wouldn't necessarily say it was accurate. Mm. I, but can is is any kind of drama or whatever accurate? Well, you know, it's just the fact that they're there. So that's a huge step forward mm. to. I mean, I hope to God that the portrayal of straight people isn't accurate either. <laughs> <laughs> because if everybody's like packed to the rafters, mm. then there's no hope for the planet. <laughs> but it's so great just to see more and more uh, queer culture in general mm. in the in the mainstream mm. media. So I think you know, worrying whether it's truly accurate or not mm. would probably just be that would come a later. little bit. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll come later when the when the whole television's covered with homosexuals. <laughs> I, I would say though, it has become highly sexualized. Mm. And I think, well, you you know, the L, the L word, which is, you know, such a flagship sort of program for, for you know, all lesbian show, um, you know, became very much about the sex scene sort of towards mm. the end, you know, and uh, and then you have the reality TV shows, you know, that are on YouTube and what have you, the five minute segments that are just, you know, and the, the real L word and those sorts of things has become, like the rest of media, highly sexualized, mm. you know, and what I'd like to see is actually a, a little bit more of the, I don't know, maybe it's the prude in me, but to see the other side as well, the mm. what we try to promote, which is um, the normal human element, which is that, you know, you can like all different types of music. You don't necessarily have to dress in a certain way or style or be anything. You can just be yourself and mm. still be mm. a successful person, whether you're lesbian or not. So talking about successful people, who would be the most influential person you've ever interviewed on Dark Sun Likes? Um, we've had a few. I love doing interviews. They're yeah. so much mm. fun. Um, we got uh, the last Gold Fap interview before... Um, before another radio station upset um, <laughs> Gold Frap. Uh, we even got her talking about her girlfriend, which was great. That was a fun one. And the other one, um, Leisha Haley, yeah. I think from when she was uh, season two, doing season two of The L Word. Yeah. Um, wow, that's the, exciting. Yeah, the Indigo Girls, that yeah. was great mm -hmm. as well. And um, one of our former colleagues uh, interviewed uh, Tegan from Tegan and Sarah. We've been very lucky. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So Ruth, is it, are, uh, do you have guys on the show as well or is it just boys that get on? Oh, you know, it, we've loosened that a little bit. It's always been strictly women uh, and out of respect for the heritage of the show because it has such a deep heritage in um, lesbian culture in Brisbane and also the founding members of ours are, are, are people that we know and, fr and friends of ours. We've kind of kept that going, but every now and then we accidentally slip a bit of a duet on with a bloke singing. And uh, we've had some uh, trans men on and we've also had gay men on as well if we felt that it was important enough for, to let them speak. You know, in the example was um, some marriage equality stuff where, you know, um, Alex Greenwich or somebody like mm. that was, you know, a, a key person to hear from. Okay. It's great that your content is, uh, I suppose, so so well thought out. Like, I, I didn't even occur to me that you know you would only be playing um, female artists and, and lesbian artists, and I, I think that's fantastic. And it's uh, certainly sounds like a, a great show. I love listening to it, <laughs> and we're going to listen to it even more. It is on Wednesday nights from seven until nine p.m. at. Uh, for Triple Z, which is 102.1 FM, and you can stream that online as well. To finish off the evening, we're going to do our quick six. 
So we are going to ask you six very quick questions. Sure, Give us your sure. first answer that comes to your mind. Are we ready? <laughs> yes. Yes? <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's do this. Very okay. Good. This is serious stuff. How do you eat your Oreos? All in one go. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry. Davina. Twist and lick. Oh. Ah. Twist and lick. <laughs> Twist and lick. Love it. Uh. Ruth? Yes. Care bears or gummy bears? Care bears. Yeah, Care bears. Because they're all like lovey dovey and. <laughs> Um, I still have my childhood one with a shamrock on the front. <gasps> oh, no, I would never yes. admit that. Sharon, what do you? What did you want to be when you grew up? I've never really been very ambitious, <laughs> <laughs> but however, I've always ended up doing things that make me seem like I am. Right, we'll take that, Davina. Um, I had no plans. I just knew uh, I didn't want to be like other people. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that's about as specific as you're going to get. I did want to be a horse trainer at one point, and then I realised that horses do poos, and then I just went, no, I'm out. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, what is your favourite ice cream flavour? Gay time. Gay time. You? Oh, um, the <laughs> Ben and Jerry's peanut butter thing. I've heard that before. Yes. Uh, what is your favourite pizza topping? Salami. Hot salami. <laughs> and how about you? Um, I kind of like the Mediterranean pizza, so I do like the olives and the and yes, I'll go over to salami or what have you as well. Fantastic, thank you. And no Sharon, worries. number six. Yeah, number six. We have to ask the six question. Do you like thongs or boots? Oh, not on the feet. Oh, <laughs> wherever, love, wherever. Um, thongs. Boots. <laughs> Thank you, and guys. That is our quick six. Certainly our most interesting quick six so far. Thank you very, very much for joining us. And I know you're going to hang around on the couches for our third segment for the evening as well, which is going to be exciting. Sure. Tell us all about what's going on in the world. And uh, don't forget that you can catch Dykes on Mics via their Facebook account. So you can search them there. They don't do Twitter. Uh, Ruth has too much to say. She can't do it in 140 characters. Uh, so search them on Facebook and listen in on Wednesdays. Uh, thank you very much, ladies, for joining us. We'll be back uh, after these very quick breaks on QTV. Welcome back to QTV. Now, there are a lot of events that we would like to remind all of our viewers out there to check out coming up soon. A Queer Community Cafe event is on this Sunday, the 2nd of June, 2013, <laughs> 1.30 until 4.30. The theme is Where Do the Currents Meet? Where attendees will talk about the places and spaces where we connect with others. It will provide a space where people from the LGBTIQ communities can come together, share a meal, and have meaningful conversations about important issues in their communities. The event is completely free for anyone to attend, taking place at the Stores Building Brisbane Powerhouse, otherwise known as the Volcana Women's Circus Space. Now, uh, Ruth and Davina, do you have anything? Well, all I can see was your head nodding in agreement <laughs> with me there. Um, do you have anything coming up uh, that we can tell all of our viewers they can come and check your fabulous selves out uh, in the near future? Well, I am, for the first time in 28 years, performing a dance piece this Saturday night <laughs> in an event called the Estedford Wives, nice. and it's Leotard Revival. So we've taken uh, leotards from the Rock of Stedford from 1983. Uh, I've been issued with mine, it's a lovely green number, and I've also been issued with a song. Uh, I actually have to dance to Morrissey's uh, November Spawn a Monster. Awesome. And that sounds very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what and, styles um, is he doing? Ballet, wait. doing interpretive <laughs> movements? It's, uh, well, I don't know. All I know is that I have uh, the next few days to work it out. <laughs> uh, it's been put on by Sean Young Studios and Eileen Chilpuss and Nerida Waters. And it is this Saturday at Sean Young Studios, 37 Manila Street, East Brisbane. Fantastic independent art studio that should be supported by everybody. As we said last <laughs> week, and I think the week before as well, we love Sean Young. Check it out. Mm. Third, isn't it? No, the first. That's the first of June. It's the first of June. It's it the first of June. <laughs> a week later, however, well, on the Friday night, a week later, we've got the GLBN. They're having uh, Fruits with a Twist, which is their monthly event. It's for professionals and business owners like those that own studio. They should come along to this one. And uh, it's going to be um, held as usual. And this month, the theme tonight is supporting the Gold Coast Pride. It starts at 6.30 and it's at Era Bistro. So come along and check that one out. 
now on Saturday the 8th of June, uh, coming to the Garden of Wickham. Now this sounds very interesting, it's for Adam and Steve. The event is starting from 9pm, it has DJs, topless waiters, go-go dancing blokes and man-on-man -man jelly wrestling by Manhunt. Free entry from 9pm to 5am. I have so many words to say about that, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to drop them all and leave you to go to our next event, Matt. On Saturday the 15th of June, starting at 10am, uh, there's an inner beauty yoga event at Redlands Healing Centre. Join Nicole Aristelli for their workshop, which combines yoga with Ayurda, which is literally nutrition for the skin. Uh, the ingredients are naturally acquired from vegetable sources like plants, herbs, fruits and essential oils. So that sounds interesting. And then at night, uh, starting at 8 p.m., Feathers are hosting their Girls in Uniform dance. Oh, go Feathers. Oh, go feathers. <laughs> yes. Feathers. Now, feathers. feathers have been around for 22 years, so we love to support them. Uh, their events are held at the Narang RSL and Memorial Club, and I can tell you that last month's birthday bash, it was packed at 1 a.m. And there were so many people who'd been there for years going. It was fantastic. I wait every uh month we get the feathers newsletter delivered to darks and monks and it is my favorite piece of reading i actually ever. can't get it off ruth we'll be going to air <laughs> and ruth will be sort of op should be sitting there opening up the packet and we'll be having to get the studio set up and get all the music all everything you know all hooked up and ready to go and she'll be there opening the feathers uh, newsletter I so she can read what's happening and oh, when's dj jazzy jan playing and what's happening with this and what's happening with that yeah. yes they rang us up and asked us if they could <laughs> send it to us online and i said no okay. <laughs> i was going to say i'm fascinated that they send you things on paper we're the only we, person we they do that that for. We're the only ones I do it for we, because we said that we loved it so much. <laughs> now talking about paper, I was um, at QPP tonight. They've got a new book out. It's called Positive Is That Good? It's got stories in it written by those who um, have gone through uh, having to learn to live with HIV and their stories with relation to that. So if you wanted to um, get in touch with qpp.net.au and request a copy, it is free. So that's uh, Positive Is That Good? Some pretty special things going on there. Uh, the Brisbane Lesbian and Gay the Brisbane Lesbian <laughs> <laughs> the Brisbane Lesbian and Gay Pride Choir is celebrating its fifteenth birthday with a concert to be held at Alexandra's Restaurant at Metropolitan Motor Inn in Spring Hill. I've heard many many things about the the choir and how wonderful they are. They actually yeah. sang at the uh, Lesbian and Trans Info Day that was on oh, last great. weekend, which over a hundred people went to. Mm. They were brilliant. They were mm. really good. Great. They did a great number of um, Pride Fair Day last year with um, Paige Phoenix from the X Factor as well, the, the trans performer. That was lots mm -hmm. of fun to see. Uh, now, our final reminder for the evening uh, is that Brisbane Pride Festival's 2013 Queen's Birthday Ball Awards will be held on June 9th, uh, which is a Sunday night. It's the long weekend. And Ruth's going to come with me to visit me. Um, <laughs> nom Joy. Nominations are finalised and the voting lines are open, so you can vote for everyone, uh, including <laughs> people sitting on the couch over there. And they close very soon, oh. so make sure you jump on, vote. <laughs> Feathers are also nominated, so I'd love to see them win. And uh, some of our favourite local hotels are nominated as well. Um, now, that is all we have time for this evening. Make sure you do check us out uh, on Facebook or on Twitter. We really do love to get the feedback and see uh, who's listening and hear what you think about each of the shows. So uh, you can catch all of our personal Twitter handles or you can tweet at QTV Brisbane or jump on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash QTV Brisbane. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ruth and Davina. Thank Cheers. You. I'm Michael James. I'm Sharon Mulheron. And I'm Matthew Bowe. See you next week. <laughs>